Well, it's time to, to ask the doctor this morning, our pet doctor, Dr. Jerome Williams is here and uh, Jillian and I are getting well acquainted again. Oh, yeah. Yes, I just love Jillian. <laughs> and we have some folks on the phone who want to ask you some questions, but let me give the phone number again, 741-WBRC, that's 741-9272. And Sharon is on the line. Good morning, Sharon. You're from Bessemer, right? Hi, Sharon. You there? Uh-huh. Yeah. Good morning. What's your uh, question for Dr. Jerome Williams? Yes, doctor, uh, I have, right, I have a male teeth, and, yes, I have a male teeth. Yeah. Oh, you, you may need to turn your the volume down on your television. It's uh, giving you that reverb, so oh. it's making it hard for you to, to, to talk and hear at the same time, okay. so turn that down. And I would like to know, uh, there's a Jack Russell. Uh-huh that um, they get together sometimes, but the male teeth, he is like more aggressive with the Jack Russell, and the Jack Russell is okay. But it's my dog that is more aggressive. Can they just get along? And most likely they can. One of the things that your dog may be doing is trying to be protective. So you gotta let your dog know it's okay for uh, it to interact with the with the Jack Russell, but it's mm -hmm. probably just give them give them time to work it out together. They'll usually do that. Oh, okay, he's so small. He thinks he's a big dog. <laughs> yes, yes, but he's also probably being protective of you. Mm -hmm. He feels that's what you want him to do. So oh. uh, try to reinforce uh, the notion that it's okay for him to interact with other dogs. Okay, I'll try that. Thank you. Okay. Mhm. Mm and a lot of times those dogs are trying to, you know, maintain their pecking order, That's so right. to speak. That's you know, correct. I'm the alpha dog here. Yes, so yes. No invasion of that territory. Okay, we have someone else. Um, Ren from, is from Hoover. Good morning, Ren. Hey, how are you? Good morning. What is your, your question? Okay, I have a little small dog. Uh, she has a lot of separation issues. I can't leave the house without oh. her sitting by the door and you know, whining, and if I go anywhere, she wants to go with me, and she won't even go to bed unless I go to bed. <laughs> I've tried all the separation of products that they have out, yes. and none of them work. If none of those work, then we might can put you in contact with a behaviorist. Uh, call my office at the Red Mountain Animal Clinic, 326-8080, uh, and I'll get you in touch with somebody that may be able to help you. Thank you very much. Okay. I hope that helps you, Ren. All right, Jerry is from Winfield. Good morning. Jerry, are you there? Yes, ma'am. Oh, good morning. What's your question for Dr. Williams? Oh, well, we've got this little dog. No, well, she's not little no more. <laughs> <laughs> don't let him catch her. Put her to sleep. I don't understand. Well, we got this dog come in on the Hackerberg storm several years ago. Mm-hmm. Found it underneath her shed. And then, anyway, she won't let us pet her. She's still skittish. Wow. Real protective of, of the donor. Well, she don't, she don't bother me, but. Okay. <laughs> but anyway, we can't catch her. There. Well, she got fleas and ticks. And we want to give her something. What can we do to her? You may try to get a, a tranquilizer from your veterinarian, put it in some food enough to get her sedated, and get your hands on it that way. There are some other products out there that can also try to uh, modify behavior. You can talk to your veterinarian about those also. But in the meantime, using a tranquilizer in the food may be enough to get your hands on and try to get, you know, her used to you and feeling okay about you. Oh, well, she's probably about five years old. I forget when the Hackleberg storm come in, but we found her underneath the shed. <laughs> yes. oh, wow. She's a puppy. Well, yeah. bless you for taking that little dog in or wanting to anyway. I hope that's helped you. Oh, goodness. She's a, but, but uh, tranquilizers, huh? Tranquilizer, yes. And uh, we'll get them at the veterinarian's or I'm cross county Yeah, you get that from a veterinarian. Yes. Uh, All right. All okay. Right. Jerry, I Good hope that with helps us. you. Is there, is there anything we can give her a liquid? You know, like she loves when you put in a wiener. You, know? you can put that in, 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 a, in a wiener or, or anything like that. You can put the tranquilizer in that and let her eat that. That would be the best way to do it. Okay. Well, I appreciate it. Sure thing. All right, Jerry, thanks so much for calling. All right, Debbie is from Roebuck. Good morning. Good morning. What's your question? 
Yes, uh, I have a Lasha Opsa, mm-hmm. and he's very independent. And right now, he's taking spells of where he won't eat for like a week at a time. Oh wow! And I was wondering if there's anything I can do to get his appetite better. Uh, how's his weight? Is he maintaining normal weight? Yes. Uh, and what are you feeding him from the table? People food. Uh, a little bit, but mostly dry, uh, dry dog food, yeah. and we feed him wet dog food also. You might want to get him in to have him examine and make sure there's not a health problem that's caused him not to eat. Okay. Things like uh, bad teeth or some uh, some other kind of digestive mm-hmm. problems that may be underlying. And it may just be his behavior. He may be having enough to maintain, and you just don't see him eating enough. Mm-hmm. Well, he don't seem to be losing any weight, so... Yeah, you didn't know if we should do something or take him to the bed or what. I'd get him checked out, but it doesn't sound like you have a serious problem if he's maintaining weight. Okay. All right. I appreciate it. Sure thing. All right. Uh, Susanna, are there any more callers? All right. Well, thank you so much for calling today. And uh, Dr. Williams, thanks so much for your expertise. A lot of times when. Always good to be here. Yeah. And remember, this is the height of the hot season. Mm-hmm. Keep those dogs and cats out of the cars. Definitely. And, and out of the direct sun. No, no, don't leave the dogs in the cars, <laughs> even if you're running in for a minute. Just yes. don't do it, right? Absolutely. Okay, because a minute can turn into five minutes, which can turn into ten minutes. Those poor dogs are suffering in the in the car, in the yes. hot car. So don't do that. All right. Thanks so much, JJ Pruitt.